I've got a critical look at a Vice article for you in this segment, talking about Gab and something called the Fediverse. This might actually blow your mind, what I'm about to tell you. Some pretty big news on what Gab has been up to lately. Now, there's a lot of people on the left who absolutely despise Gab, and there are even some people on the right who despise Gab. But for the most part, Gab has been a fairly active Twitter alternative for a while. I don't necessarily want to call it a Twitter alternative because, look, anybody can launch a microblogging platform, and Gab does that with the aim of free speech. Vice publishes this story by Ben McCooch. Now, uh, um, I'm, I, I'm assuming that's how his name's pronounced. I'm not trying to, you know, some people have made fun of him for that, but that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, ben, ben McCooch is notable right now because he refused to turn over ISIS chat logs. Um, the RCMP, I believe, wanted them. He refused to turn them over and lost a court case and now will now turn them over. It's a very interesting position to be in where you're defending evidence that could implicate ISIS as a journalist. Journalists should never give up information to federal authorities and they should protect their sources to, to, so that in the future we can have this information released to the public, which may at some point help law enforcement. However, Ben is now being uh, slammed because Vice has agreed to give up the logs after a lawsuit. So what can I say? You know, I don't know where this guy's at, but what I can tell you is he's a fake news writer anyway. So don't expect too much defense of this guy when he's smeared minds, M-I-N-D-S dot com, and overtly lied. Like, listen, this is the kind of guy that in private will tell you like one thing and then publicly lie and smear you. And that's what he does. He, He does this. So here's what he's doing now. He's smearing Gab because Gab federated. So let me explain the Fediverse to you, if you don't know what it is. A long time ago, several years, I believe, something called the Fediverse was created, which is essentially a a way for various social networks to interact with each other. To put it simply, there is a very large network, a node, called Mastodon. It's where Will Wheaton went after he got fed up with Twitter. They banned him, however. Mastodon is far left. However, they're operating on open source code in a federated decentralized network. These principles of open source and decentralization are libertarian, be it left or right. It is about liberty. Something interesting has, has happened. Years ago, I, uh, I was very active in many of these you know, hacker communities, and I'm still friends with a lot of these people and, and routinely talk to them, and they send me messages all the time. The hacker community is very libertarian, libertarian left and right open source and, and decentralized. What this means is open source is you make code, anybody can see that and, and take it and change it. Um, I, I believe open source allows for people to um, create their own version, fork off of your code to create something else. And there are other iterations where everyone adds to the code and builds it uh, collaboratively. The decentralization means there is no one authority. With Twitter, you have Jack Dorsey and you have Twitter itself. They can ban whoever they want. Within the Fediverse, if you have your own server like Gab does, the only people who can ban someone from Gab is the, the administration of Gab, the people who run it. But when you federate, that means a different network can access the tweets or whatever you want to call it, the posts from Gab users. It's kind of complicated, but let me break it down. You log into Gab, you post, you know, hey, I love, you know, cheese pizza. And then someone from a different network can see that post appear saying, and then respond with like, wow, well, I'm actually a fan of Supreme. I'm, you know, maybe we can come over, have some beers and watch the game. You know what I mean? So, so basically it's almost like email with messages being sent out to everybody as opposed to singularly. This means if you're on Mastodon and someone from Gab posts, you can't ban, Mastodon can't ban what Gab says. There is no Jack Dorsey. There's no censorship. But what Mastodon did was block the, the access to Gab. So if you are on Mastodon, you will not see Gab posts. Unfortunately, it's a decentralized network doing exactly what it was meant to do. Open, free, and no one can be censored. Think about it. In this new network that Gab has now joined, federating, Mastodon, which is far left, a far left bubble, got angry. Did they ban Gab? Nope. Did they shut them down? Nope. They just told their users, we won't let you see Gab. Okay, fine. Great. Gab is still in the Fediverse. Other people can still access them. Isn't that how it should be? If you're on Twitter and someone says a naughty word, can't you just click block? Well, now you can. In the Fediverse, there is no central authority to take you down. It's complicated. It's not perfect. 
But uh, let's 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 read a little bit about what he, about what he says. He re- he writes Mastodon was launched as a decentralized, social justice friendly Twitter alternative that was free of Nazis and harassment. But two years later, the biggest Mastodon instance is now Gab, a far right social media network known widely as a gathering space for white supremacists, only because you repeatedly lie about what it is. In a study done that was that's public and mainstream, Gab is only. Only a small percentage more of Gab's posts are hate speech, overt hate speech. You know what that means? On twi- uh, compared to Twitter, Twitter, with its hundreds of millions of users, produces hundreds of thousands hate speech of, of hate speech posts per day, and Gab doesn't. So, look, you can slam Gab all day and night for being mean and abrasive or whatever. You don't like the guys who run it. Calling them far right simply because certain people use it is not necessarily fair. Gab is a free speech social media network, but of course, framing the framing alternative media to destroy them is what these people do. Why Ben McCooch is catering to the billionaires, I don't know. It's some kind of new neo-libertarian. <laughs> I, 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 it's weird because neo-libertarian isn't, isn't necessarily the right word. I say that because there's a lot of pro-corporate libertarian types who are like, let the big businesses grow, but they're acting in defense of corporate oligarchy. I can't quite figure it out. Let's read on. Despite getting attention as a healthier Twitter alternative, most Mastodon federations have remained small. It's almost like the market didn't support it. Mastodon, which functions much like an open source Twitter, is decentralized in that anyone can set up their own federation or server. Okay, he's wrong. What he's talking about is the Fediverse, of which Mastodon is one node, and they created a bunch of code that works with the Fediverse. Gab took Mastodon's code because it's open source and created their own version and linked. Mastodon got mad and banned them, but there's still many other nodes that can access Gab. What Gab did is actually one of the most powerful things for the Fediverse and could, dramatic, could, could dramatically change the future of social media, by the way. They say, uh, they go on to smear Gab as some other silly nonsense I'm not going to read. Um, but they say they announced on July 4th that it had switched its backend to run on Mastodon software, instantly making it the largest Mastodon user with more than double the number of users as the next largest federation. Because Gab is simply implementing Mastodon's open source code, there's no functional way for Mastodon to shut down Gab. This, of course, was part of the appeal for Gab in the first place. They say that in the past, Gab had lost its web host GoDaddy and had been banned from accepting donations via PayPal. Gab is now unstoppable and can never again be taken down as a whole ever again. And can now, wait, it says, and can never be taken down as a whole ever again. Gab sent a motherboard in a series of email exchanges. He's right. Gab was banned as an app from the app stores. Dissenter was banned, which is another Gab property. They tried to shut down their domain. Well, now what Gab has done is joined the Fediverse. You can't ban Federation apps. It would be like Google banning a browser because the browser can go to a naughty website. That would be absurd. Gab is just one node in a bigger network of decentralized social networks now and has actually provided powerful legitimacy for open source decentralized internet. But however, Mastodon released a statement denouncing Gab. It had also said some servers in its Fediverse were blocking Gab domains, meaning Gab can't interact with them. Mastodon is completely opposed to Gab's project and philosophy which seeks to monetize and platform racist content while hiding behind the banner of free speech. I don't believe they've monetized it. And I think that's not true. It said in a statement posted on its website, the Mastodon community does not approve of their attempt to hijack our infrastructure and has already taken steps to isolate Gab and keep hate speech off the Fediverse. Therein lies the conundrum of the former freedom-loving hacker community. It's really funny. My God, my mind is blown by this. I knew hackers back in the day who said, we need decentralization so that no one can ban you and shut down your speech. We need open source so anyone can contribute and get involved. You got your wish. But something happened. These communities are being taken over by authoritarians who are now shocked to discover the tool is doing exactly as intended. Congratulations. We won. The hackers. Data love. Freedom of information, etc. There, there are entire hacker communities dedicated to the, to the right to share information and to prevent anyone from shutting that down. Unfortunately, these communities have been taken over by authoritarians. Too bad. We planted the seeds years ago, and not me. People before me who have been working on this for a long time, people who champion cryptocurrency and, 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 and otherwise, knew 
that when the seeds of decentralization and free information were planted, there's nothing you can do to stop it. And you can take it over with your fringe ideology and your cult-like behavior. But guess what? The Federation works exactly as it was intended. These people would seek to shut down open source and decentralization. They would seek to centralize power and authority to silence those who would dare oppose them. But you can't because the seeds have been planted and the trees are growing. And it's only a matter of time before more networks join the Fediverse, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and otherwise start falling apart. And you can then simply follow anyone you, you, you see fit when they run their own servers. So to the smear artists, the dirty, dirty smear merchants like Ben McCooch, who's outraged that someone would dare create a small business like mines, he would try and destroy them before they had any chance of taking down the centralized hub that is Facebook or Twitter. You can do nothing, nothing but, but scream into the wind. Unfortunately, it's people like you who have lost. Massive corporate centralization will fail and decentralization will win. And it's happening and you can't take them down. Stick around. I got one more segment segment coming up for you in, a, in just a moment. I will see you shortly.